Today on Blockheads Create, we're going to be building this fully automatic tree farm and a little villager breeder. In between episodes, I brought two villagers through the nether from Desbit's villager breeder. But what we need to do now is build a little breeder for them because what I want to do is I want to build underneath our farm here a little trading hall just for the farmers at least. So I think if I just make the breeder like right in this area right here, that's going to be the way to go. I dug out the little area we need for our villagers, including a drop chute. Look at these cool windows in the create mod. Look at these things. Well, I kind of went into builder mode and I kind of, I built a thing. I like it. That's the breeder inside there. Okay, so now everything is in place. We have the beds that we need. We have the breeding area down here. Uh, we have the villager sort of when the babies come down. And then we have the pickup area with the little dispenser. And then this is going to take them over and across here into what is soon going to be the trading hall. Alrighty, here we go. We're going to send you. And then we're going to send you, if we can get you on there. There we go. Up they go into their brand new home. And that was like the easiest villager transportation ever. Grab out some carrots. Place in the composter. People always put like glass on top of this. Don't really know why, so I, I think I, I should do it. Hoe the field, plant the carrots, give the rest of the carrots to this guy. He stays put for half a second. There we go. I think we're good. We've made our escape. While those guys are in there breeding away, I think what I'm going to do is start working on this trading hall. I'm increasing the size of my auto miner here in preparation for this dig. Okay, it's now five tall and eight wide. Time to get to work, Auto Miner. Oh my goodness. What have I unleashed? What have I unleashed? <laughs> okay, the machine has run its course. Uh, this room is bigger than I really need it to be. I think, though, with some decorating and stuff, it's going to become a little bit smaller. I need to bring this room down five more blocks so I can have some room for all the redstone and contraptions that are going to make the farmers go up and down, as well as a place for the zombies. Okay, here we go. Wow, look at the size of this room. This is kind of giving me an idea slash problem. Well, the problem is that um, I'd like to decorate this season using a lot of wood. And I keep running out of wood for like chests and stuff. So I think I might build myself a tree farm. Hey, we've got a baby. We've got a little baby baby. And he fell down the chute. So that means this thing is working. Over there is where I have like all my mechanical stuff. I kind of want the tree farm to go in here. The tree farm is all laid out with the strips of dirt. Each of these types of trees has six rows. And basically what we need to do is construct a contraption that has saws on it that will go across and come back like this. And I'm going to use a new thing called a gantry. This thing requires 72 saws, which require a lot of iron ingots. And fortunately, I got quite a few from the dig. I also need to make 36 deployers, which requires some brass. How do you make brass? You make it in a heated mixer out of zinc and copper ingots. You can use anything that you can like start a fire with, like wood and everything. Copper ingots here and the zinc over here. I also need to make some brass funnels and both brass funnels and the deployers require these things called electron tubes. And how do you make an electron tube? Well, duh, you use rose quartz. Go, okay, so then you make rose quartz with redstone and quartz. Okay, you have to make polished rose quartz, which re quartz, quartz, quartz. You have to make polished rose quartz, which requires sanding rose quartz. And then you have to use some other stuff, and then you finally get an electron tube. So I was looking all over for that quartz that I knew I had. Guess where it was? Guess where it was? In my inventory. <laughs> okay, so you make sandpaper out of literally paper and sand. I thought I had some in here, but you can also make sand out of gravel, believe it or not. You can just run gravel through a crusher. What you actually do is you take the sandpaper and you put it in one of your hands and then the rose quartz and put it in the other. And you just do this. 
And in case you were wondering, which I'm sure you were, yes, you can put the sandpaper in your other hand and the rose quartz in your offhand. Okay, next to make electron tubes, we need redstone torches. You need um, nuggets, iron nuggets. Okay, we're gonna make our brass hands. Okay, I think we're finally ready to make deployers. Yes. 28. Why only 28? Oh, I ran out of cogwheels. Okay. Okay, I finished the dirt, and then what we have here is a chest system. Now, on this chest system, we're actually going to be using regular old hoppers. So we're just going to put these on the back. But the cool thing is, is if we don't have to do one of those item sorty etho hopper timer called impulse item sorter thingy-mabob because we get to use brass funnels instead. So we're just gonna go ahead and put a brass funnel on each and every one of these, but that's actually not gonna do the sorting. What's gonna do the sorting is, wait for it. You can put this little thing right here and it's a filter. So we'll do the jungles right here. And that means that this, um, this brass funnel will only pick up jungle uh, saplings. So I need the jungle logs actually is what I need. <laughs> um, so what I need actually is logs. So that filter will only pick up oak logs. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these logs and set up this filter. Okay. The filters are all set. This last one has no filter. That's going to grab anything that comes through. That's not uh, a log or a stick. Eventually I might put in like a bone meal or a composter, I mean. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and build the windmill. Okay, that's running. Now what we need to do is just gear this thing up by putting a small cog wheel, and then a big cog wheel, small cog wheel, and then another big cog wheel, clutch. So the clutch just allows me to turn it off, and then the gear shift is what makes it go uh, forward and backward. Okay, what gantry shafts are gonna do is it's a special shaft. like this, and then the gantry goes on top of it. Okay, and we're just gonna put this on our clutch and then see that stops this guy from going. We need to put our gantry on here. So this is the actual machine that goes along the gantry shaft, like this. And then we're gonna grab our chassis, our linear chassis. Next, we're gonna slime this entire back like this. Okay, next I'm gonna put our deployers on every place where I want the trees planted, like every row. In between every single one of those deployers, I placed a chest. I probably don't need that many chests on this thing, but I did it anyway. Then right here, we're gonna put that portable storage interfacey thing that gives the items to uh, another place, like that. And then a block above that, we need to place another one of these pointing down, like that. The other thing about brass funnels, which is super nice, is the fact that they, um, let's see, what am I trying to say? The fact that they will move an entire stack at a time. So that's super nice. Okay, and we have to make sure that their um, dealy boppers are pointing the right direction. And by dealy boppers, I mean arrows. And then if I place this here, there we go. So see how the arrows are pointing up? So that means they're just gonna come out of this one and then into that one. And then out of that one, we need another funnel, which I don't have, which I need to make, apparently, um, that will then go on to the conveyor belt, which will go over to those ones. Okay, the other thing that needs to go on this deal, that's not a chest, in between these hands is our redstone contact. I just moved the shaft back by two. So then this right here is just our on-off switch for now. And then right here, what we can do is put in the powered toggle latch. Right here, so basically whenever this thing receives power, it's going to switch. And then the other thing I needed was this pulse extender. And then what that does is it gives a little bit of time uh, between when uh, this thing gets powered and when this latch triggers. And that's 10 ticks, 12 ticks, 13 ticks. I'm just moving my mouse wheel to change this. And it, it can go up to 30 minutes. <laughs> 28 seconds, 35 seconds, but I'm gonna set this to like about two seconds. So basically what that means is that when the thing comes all the way back here and it hits this redstone contact, 
basically it's just going to be parked here for two seconds before this thing switches and then sends it back the other way. And the reason I want to do that is because if I ever want to park it, I need a little bit of time to flip the switch. So if it's all the way back and then it instantly starts going forward, I can't flip the switch fast enough to like park it where I really want it. All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to slime every other one of these. And this is where our saws are going to go. Okay, now the saws. Okay, now it seems like that would be just enough to make the thing work, but the problem is, is when this thing goes this way, and then it comes back, on the way back, there's trees. So this thing will not go through a tree, but we can cut the tree down. So essentially what I have to do is I have to build saws on the backside. Before I do that though, what I need to do is I need to put um, a filter on each one of these deployers so it knows which sapling to deploy or which item to deploy. Otherwise, it'll just it'll literally place logs. It'll place anything in the inventory of this contraption. So it'll actually place the logs that you pick up. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And one cool feature is with these filters, it actually doesn't use an item. You have to use the item to set the filter, but it like the item isn't like used up. So you're not like placing the item in there actually like you're just sort of um, setting it, I guess. Okay, cool. All of our filters are set on every single deployer. Next, we need to come back here to this chassis and we need to add onto it. This is our like where our gantry is. And then we need to add onto it more chassis going left and right from here. Okay, that's done all the way across now. We just need to put the saws on the back and this thing is almost done. Okay, that's done. Now, a very critical step. We need to go to each one of these and set these to one. And the reason we have to do this, this design in creative mode uh, tended to get stuck on occasion and I don't really know what the problem was, but setting these to one seemed to help. Basically doing this makes it so that if it's slimed, which only some of these are, but I'm just going to set them all to one. That way it's consistent and I don't have to think about it. Um, if it's slimed, this number actually tells you how many blocks out it will stick to that slime. But if we don't set this to one, it's possible that the slime will grab a tree and try to push it instead of um, cut it. And then the thing like gets jammed and stops. Okay, we have the conveyor line all working. I had to raise this up a block. So we have an extra row of chests uh, because it was one block too low from this. So I got power all the way from our windmill. Oh, one more thing I had to do, I went ahead and lit up this area a little bit better. I decided to just put torches in the ground. I was originally like stuck on putting glowstone everywhere. Then I was like, I have to go to the nether to get more glowstone. I don't want to do that. Uh, the last thing that we have to do here is we have to run a redstone line. Uh, not there, but here. Because this, when this contact hits, it will switch this guy going the other direction. Yay. But the trouble is, is it won't do that the other way. So we have to do is run a redstone line all the way across this deal, all the way to this guy right here. Here we are. Okay. Here we go. Let's flip the switch. That was anticlimactic. <laughs> there we are. Okay. Is it going? It did one. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Yeah. It's got a little lag spike, I think. There we are. Oh, of course. Baby zombie. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's going pretty well. Yeah, okay. So for some f reason, this full thing does not work when the gantry is at the very back position. I, I don't really know why that is, and I completely forgot that that's a thing. Um, so basically what I have to do is I have to move this over one, or I could move it over several blocks and just put it in the middle or something, but I'm just going to move it over one block, I think. Um, okay, so this is the wrong contraption right here, This this thing here. It needs to be one of these. It's actually a pulse repeater. Uh, I always get these two like confused of what I want to do with them. So the pulse repeater basically will put out a pulse after 
getting powered after so many seconds or so many ticks or whatever um where the extender like takes the pulse and extends it so i keep thinking that i want to extend the pulse but what i want to do is i want the pulse to wait a little bit and i, th I think it's working it really is a crazy contraption when you think about it like nothing like this would work in uh regular vanilla minecraft like you couldn't build something like this because especially just the planting of the saplings you have to do that by yourself like there's no way to plant the saplings without the player planting it so you have to stand there while you're making the wood and you could only do one wood type at a time this is harvesting every wood type in the game in one pass so <laughs> it's pretty cool okay it's on a delay it's sitting there okay then it starts again good all right let's watch it transfer its items once it gets here hopefully it'll do that go okay we can have a look at what's coming up here so that's good i'm not seeing any saplings so it's working as uh it's supposed to and that's just so cool that all of the stuff that's coming in just goes into the right chest it just it just does it it's awesome <laughs> i love that part i love these filters they're so great I can't wait to make an item storage uh, unit. It's going to be so easy with these filters. But anyways, I think we're out of time for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed this episode on the Blockhead server. And I hope you're having an amazing, awesome, beautiful, fantastic day. And God bless.